Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube, and in this Power BI tutorial, we are gonna look at four ways to get data in Power BI. Stay tuned. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right. So you're new to Power BI and you're not really sure what to do. The first thing you're gonna have to do is get some data, right? We can't do anything from a report perspective. We can't create these awesome visualizations without getting data into Power BI for us to do something with it. So how do we do that? There are a couple different ways you can go about doing this. There are some terms that are used within the product that you may not be familiar with. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna break that down for you so that you can understand what it is, how we can get that data in, and what may be the right approach for you and your needs. Before you even get started with this, be sure that you've downloaded the latest update of Power BI Desktop. You can get that by going over to powerbi.com, selecting products, and then Power BI Desktop, and then just download it to get started. It's free. Once you've downloaded and installed Power BI Desktop, you will get presented with a welcome dialog. To actually get data into Power BI, you guessed it, on that dialog, you can just select get data, or you can close that dialog and on the main ribbon bar, there is a get data button as well. When you do that, you're gonna get presented with a bunch of data sources. Power BI itself supports a ton of data sources. There are a lot and there are more added all the time, which is also why you wanna make sure you have the latest and greatest Power BI desktop. The first way to get data into Power BI is to import that data. This is also referred to as a cached data set. And the idea here is that we're gonna actually copy the data from your data source and pull it into the data model that's hosted inside of Power BI. So that could be just in Power BI Desktop or later when you publish the Power BI Desktop file to the Power BI service, that imported cached data model will then reside inside of the Power BI service itself. So to import some data, let's go ahead and we're gonna go select get data from the top ribbon bar and right away, we've got our choice. We're gonna choose Excel. If you wanted to choose a different data source that's not in that immediate list, you could click on other data sources and get the full list of data sources that are available inside of Power BI. When you do import data, you have the option of all the data sources that are available inside of Power BI. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Excel, and then I'm gonna to browse to the Excel file that I wanna pull the data from. Once I select that file, I can either double click on the file or I can select open, and then I'm gonna get the navigator dialog. This dialog allows me to select the sheets that are inside of the Excel workbook. You would also see this similar experience with other data sources, such as tables and items that you wanna select. And then when I do that, it's gonna give me a preview of the data and I have two options. I can either hit load and it's gonna pull it immediately into the data model, or I can select edit and I always recommend selecting edit. Selecting edit pulls up the Power Query Editor. This is the query that's actually gonna be run against the data itself to shape the data into what you want it to be. Some examples of things that you can do here is you can remove some columns, you can split some columns. There's a whole range of items that are available to you inside of the Power Query dialog. Not gonna get into all of that in this video, but just know that typically you're gonna to wanna to edit your data first and not just blindly load it into your data model. Once you're done shaping your data inside of Power Query, you're gonna to wanna to go to the upper left and select on close and load. What this is gonna do, it's gonna close the Power Query editor and it's gonna load that data based on the steps that you did inside of Power Query and pull all of that data inside of the Power BI data model itself. Anytime you refresh data, it's gonna rerun those steps inside of Power Query to pull that data back into your data model. Once that data is loaded, you're gonna see it over on the far right in the field list. You will see the tables that you created along with the fields inside of those tables. And then you can just drag and drop that data onto your canvas to create visuals based on the data that you imported. Pretty easy, right? But what if my data is inside of a database? Something like SQL Server. Not a big deal. All you have to do is go back up to get data. You're gonna see SQL Server in that initial list of data sources because, you know, Power BI knows the most common data sources available. Of course, those are Microsoft products, right? But SQL Server is gonna be in that list. Again, if you're using a database such as Oracle or DB2 or something like that, you can go to other data sources and pick those from the list. 
You can believe that they are available for you, but we're gonna stick with SQL Server. When we do that, we're gonna get a dialog asking us for our server name and database name. Think of this, this is the connection string, the information on how to connect to SQL Server. You don't need to supply a database, you could just supply a server name, but I'm gonna go ahead and put in my server and database name because I happen to know them. And you're also gonna have an option here to choose import or direct query. We're gonna pick import for now, we're gonna come back to direct query in a second. I'm gonna hit okay, and then it's gonna ask me for my credentials. I'm just gonna connect using Windows authentication, but you can use this using SQL authentication or database authentication or other forms of authentication as well, depending on what data source you're picking. When I do that, I hit okay again, and it's gonna give me an initial message for this data source. Again, this could be different for other data sources, but for this one, it will always try to connect using SSL or a secure socket. And if it doesn't detect that a secure socket's available, it's gonna give you this warning message, just letting you know that it's not encrypted from Power BI Desktop itself. So from Power BI Desktop to SQL Server, it is not encrypted. Everything on the Power BI service side is encrypted, so you don't have to worry about that. Go ahead and hit OK, and you're gonna be prompted again with that navigator window. And here we can select which tables that we wanna pull in. And again, you're gonna have that choice of load or edit. And which one do we wanna choose? Yep, you guessed it, we're gonna hit edit. And again, it's gonna bring up that Power Query dialog that we saw when we pulled in Excel data. So again, you're just picking your data source. The experience after you pick that data source is gonna be a familiar experience with any of the data sources that you pick. You're gonna have Power Query, you're gonna shape your data the way you want it, you're gonna hit close and load, and then that data is gonna be loaded into the data model, at which point we can drag our fields right into the canvas and start creating our visuals. All right, the second way that we can pull data into Power BI is something called Direct Query. The name kind of gives it away, and what this is is we will connect to a data source and issue queries against that data source as we interact with visuals or as we build our report. So using direct query mode, the schema or the definition of your model will reside inside of Power BI, whether that's Power BI desktop or the service. And when you're actually interacting with the visuals, the actual data will reside in your data source. So if that's SQL Server, it's gonna stay in SQL Server, whether that's on-premises or in Azure, and Power BI will query that data source directly and pull that data back in for the, to render the visuals, and then it doesn't cache that data. The data's gone at that point. Power BI doesn't keep the data. So your data stays where your data is already at. With import, we had access to all of the data sources that Power BI has to offer. If we want to go the direct query route, there is a limited set of data sources. Typically these are around like relational type data sources or some key data sources that are available based on demand. I'll have a link down in the description below that can show you the actual list of all the data sources that are available for direct query. Another thing to consider if you wanna go down the direct query route is performance. Performance could end up being a big issue for you, especially if it's a very large data set or if your definition of the data is very large as well. So you have a lot of columns. So not only is it deep, but it's wide. I'll also have a link down in the description below on a white paper for direct query, along with a good blog post on direct query as to you know things you need to consider when you're going down this road from a performance perspective. Okay, so we'll stick with our SQL Server data source. If we're starting fresh, we're gonna go up to get data. We're gonna choose SQL Server. We're gonna get that dialogue for our server name and database. We're gonna enter that information and then select direct query and hit okay. We're gonna get our authentication dialog again if we didn't connect to this data source already. If you had already connected to this data source with inside of the same Power BI desktop on your machine, it's gonna know those credentials so you may not get prompted with that again. At that point, you're gonna get the navigator window similar to the way we did before. We're gonna select our table and we're still gonna have that option of either loading or editing our data beforehand. Again, I always recommend edit so that you can do some shaping. You're gonna have some limited options from the direct query side. That's the other thing to consider with direct queries. You don't have the full real data shaping and data modeling experience that you would normally with import. But once you're done doing what you want to do, you can go ahead and hit close and load the way you did before, and this will pull data into the data model. The other thing to consider, I already mentioned that your 
data modeling experience is going to be limited. So when you go to create things like DAX measures, you're going to be restricted on what you can do. For example, time intelligence functions are not available by default when using direct query. And this is because of how it's going to shape the query against your backend data source, and it can cause some big performance overhead that'll make for a very poor experience. So those are things you want to consider when going down this road. There is an option inside of Power BI Desktop that you can do to allow you the full set of features, but know that there's going to be some performance impact when you do this. All right, the third option that we can get data into Power BI is to use a live connection. A live connection is specific to analysis services only. This could be analysis services on premises, or it could be analysis services in Azure. It could also be a data set that's already in Power BI. Whenever we connect to an actual Power BI data set, that's going to use live connections as well. But for this example, what I'm going to do is have you go to get data, choose analysis services, and again, you're gonna be prompted to enter in your server information and your database. Database is optional. And the radio dial that you're gonna have listed there is either connect live or import. So you can still import data with analysis services, but what we wanna do is a live connection. And when you hit okay, you won't get prompted for credentials because analysis services requires Windows authentication. You will get the navigator experience where you're gonna to wanna to go expand your database and select the model that you want to connect live to. This could be tabular or multidimensional. So it could be a model from a tabular perspective, or it could be a cube from a multidimensional perspective. Then when you select that, you'll notice that we don't have an option to edit here. And that's because there is no editing experience when using a live connection. Your entire data model definition and the data itself reside in analysis services. This is not something that you're going to be able to do from a Power BI desktop perspective. So this is more for a centralized model that maybe your IT department has set up for you. They control the model, they control the data and the refresh of that data. And all you're doing is just connecting live to it to create reports on top of that data. You'll also notice once you've connected to that data source, after you've hit okay through everything, that on the left-hand side, you're only gonna see the icon for the report designer. You will not see the data tab or the relationship tab. It's not available to you in a live connected experience, but you will see those items on the right-hand side in your field list and you can drag those over like you did other items and go ahead and create visuals on top of it. All right, the fourth way that I'm gonna talk about in terms of getting data into Power BI is not something I'm gonna spend a lot of time on, but just to make you aware, there are other ways to get data into Power BI outside of Power BI Desktop. You could do this in the service itself by doing get data in the service. You're very limited. There are no modeling options as part of that. So that's why I really recommend you use Power BI Desktop when you wanna go import data into the service instead of using just the web browser edition at the time of this video recording that is. So that may change in the future, but as of the time of this recording, the best way to do it is inside of Power BI Desktop to get the full features of Power BI itself. A couple other ways that you can get data inside of Power BI, one is called a push data set and the other is called a streaming data set. These are created in different ways. A streaming data set you can create through app.powerbi.com, a push data set is created by way of the Power BI REST APIs. And then you can use those APIs to get to load rows of data into those data sets. And for a streaming data set, you can do the same thing, or you can, we give you examples of how to do that through like PowerShell or other ways of loading that data. But just know that you're actually pushing data into those items and it's not something that you're actually connecting to a data source. But those are available for you if you need those. They're for very specific scenarios. All right, we looked at a couple ways that you can get data into Power BI. What do you think? Which one do you use the most? I would love to know that. Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.